my adore my 64 my commodore 64 hi there and welcome to a let's type episode from the commodore 64 appreciation society this is a series where i reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine and then when i finish typing it in i play it Today's game is called Dots from the September 1983 issue of Compute. This is a great issue and also includes Caves of Ice and Diamond Drop, both of which I typed in previously and enjoyed playing. I provided links to both in the description in case you'd like to check them out. Also, a reminder that if you enjoy this type of video, we have lots more. Sit back, relax, and enjoy experiencing, or re-experiencing, a really fun part of our childhood back in the 80s. But enough of that, let's get into this one and start typing. Dots was originally written for the VIC-20 by Eric Evans. As we've now seen multiple times in this series, this means that we're probably in for a simpler type of game, just because the capabilities of the VIC were so much more limited than the 64. And I'm definitely not ragging on the VIC-20. I loved that machine. It was my first computer and I had it for 3 or 4 years before upgrading to the 64. Games like Cosmic Cruncher and Omega Race are a couple of my all time favorites and I have great memories of typing in compute programs using an old black and white TV as the display. But for as much as I loved my VIC, I don't think I ever turned it on again once I got my 64. It felt like I fast forwarded through time and was suddenly living in the future. 16 colors and arcade like sound? Yes please. And whoever would need more than 64k of RAM? Huh. It's crazy to think that modern computers are about a million times faster than that old machine. But for the time, it was incredible and there's a reason it's still the highest selling computer of all time. Anyway, all this is to say is that I'm expecting Dots to be a smallish game that doesn't take full advantage of the 64's capabilities. That's cool though. As we've already seen plenty of times, great things often come in small packages and hopefully that's what happens here. Dots is a digital version of a classic pencil and paper game that I, and probably many of you, played back in school. The game starts with a bunch of dots arranged in a grid. Players take turns drawing horizontal and vertical lines between the dots, and the goal is to complete squares. When you get one, your turn continues. The person who ends up getting the most squares wins. It's a strategic game where you try to force your opponent to complete a square. It starts off pretty slowly because there's so much available space on the grid, but eventually things tighten up and finishing squares becomes inevitable. At that point, the strategy shifts a bit and you're now trying to limit them to an area where they can only get a few at a time. The worst is when your opponent goes on a long run. It's simple and fun and was a great way to spend time with a friend at lunch or sometimes during a boring class. Okay, how on earth am I supposed to type this in? Check it out. Line 90 takes up more than 80 characters, which is the max that you can enter on the 64. I've seen this kind of thing before, and usually it's easy enough to move a chunk of code to a new line. But I'm not sure with this one. We're defining a function. I don't think it can simply be split across multiple lines. I could be wrong. Regardless, leaving it as is won't work, so I need to solve it now. Before I go down this path, I'm going to take a quick look through the compute archives. Considering this line of code simply won't work, there's probably a correction. <laughs> nope. Of course. I looked through the next six issues and couldn't find anything. I also looked through the compilations to see if Dots was republished with, hopefully, a correction to that line. But also, nope. This is a bit frustrating and it probably stopped a whole lot of kids dead in their tracks when the game was published. Fortunately though, it's 2025 and I have the internet to help me out. Let's see what we can come up with. Alright, I don't love using ChatGPT for this kind of problem, but it's sometimes good for getting a quick answer. I posed my question and indeed it suggested breaking the line into three smaller ones, building up the function across each. Take a look at its code. The concept makes sense to me, but I've got to say that something about it isn't sitting right. I just don't think that you can define a function in the same way that you build up, say, the value for a variable, which is easy to do across multiple lines. But I'm no expert on functions, so we'll go with this for now. If something wonky happens in the game, this will be the first place I look. In the meantime, it at least solves the immediate problem of the line being too long, and I have to admit, it does feel kind of clever.
The rest of the code went in without any issues. Make sure to save it. After saving, we can see that it takes up 11 blocks, or just under 3K. This would have used up all of the VIC-20's RAM, but it's just a small fraction of what's available on a Commodore 64. Let's run it and see what happens. I'm really curious to see what goes on with that function. Oh, well that's a good start. Let's select K for keyboard and we'll go with skill level 5. Oh, and there's the grid. I like the color of the cursor. Moving around the board is nice and easy. And the developer put in limits so that you can't wrap. So you're always on the board. And pressing return will draw the line. And syntax error 990. Let's take a look at what it is. Oh, I see the problem. There's a typo in the word then. Let's fix that and we'll try it again. All right, keyboard and level five again. Okay, and we'll press return and another syntax error. Well, at least drew the line. Let's see what that is. Oh, there's a typo in and, missing the A. Oh, and there's another error too. There should be a colon where that square bracket is. All right, that's fixed. And again. All right, keyboard five, and we'll press return. All right, there's the line. Seems to be good. I guess the computer is thinking now. Hmm, this doesn't seem right. I don't think it should take this long, especially at the beginning of the game. Oh wow, it's crashed. This is a first for us folks. I've had lots of errors in the various programs I've typed, but I haven't crashed the 64 yet. <laughs> I should have saved after making those bug fixes. No biggie. I'm going to reset the system and do a code review. Let's see if that function statement is causing a problem after all. I reviewed the code and found a few more minor issues, which I fixed, along with the syntax errors from before. So if those three function statements work, the program should be just fine now. But it still crashed. So I'm pretty sure that the fast and easy chat GPT solution didn't work. Artificial intelligence, my butt. Fortunately, the humans on the internet were way more helpful. I posted the problem on Reddit and the answer turned out to be extremely simple and something that I totally forgot about. The 64 doesn't store basic in the same way that we read it. It's tokenized, meaning that most of the keywords we see on screen, such as peak, poke, print, etc., are stored using abbreviated tokens in order to save memory. What I totally forgot was that you can use these same abbreviations when you're typing in the program. For example, you can use the question mark instead of print, or P shift E instead of peak. So, in line 90, if I just replace peak with its abbreviated form, the line suddenly fits without a problem. And when I list it, the computer expands all of the keywords so it's displayed in more than 80 characters. This is exactly what happened in the compute listing. They obviously used abbreviations when typing in the code, but they didn't consider that the output would cause problems for anyone who didn't know about the keyword shortcuts. So, issue solved. I love working through these problems. The code is now good and we can play the game. So here we are a few minutes into the game. Up until this point, the computer is playing exactly as I would expect a human opponent to. Even though we're only on skill level 5, it's not making any dumb moves and the board is starting to fill in. We're going to have to start giving up squares soon though. And here we are. My squares are blue and the computers are red. The computer got theirs after I made a pretty dumb mistake. Now this is what I call good AI. I was forced to give the computer an opening, which has led to a chain reaction. 
It's filling them in with red now, and we can see there's a couple more to go. But it didn't. It gave me one instead. Well, I'm not too proud to take advantage of that. Here's another example where the computer didn't fill out all the squares that it could. This must be what skill level determines. The computer knows what to do, but every so often it fills a different random location even though it makes no sense. I guess that's what makes it random. The higher the skill level, the less often it chooses a random location, and on skill level 10 it doesn't make any random choices, or at least very, very few. That's a really clever way to handle skill level in a game like this. What a fun little game. I'm getting total grade school vibes and I love it. As I mentioned earlier, great things can come in small packages and this is a fantastic example of what you can squeeze into 3K. You know, it's a shame that the code wasn't printed correctly and I wonder how many people gave up trying to type it in because of that. Coding abbreviations were pretty common knowledge back then so hopefully not many. But all the same, it's a great submission from Eric Evans and thanks to Compute for publishing it. I'm really glad I was able to get it working. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any experiences with dots or typing in your own programs, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.